History teaches us that societal challenges don't have a single answer. That there's no single solution to the big issues we face. That there's no single truth. We need to be curious in order to discover. We need to listen in order to understand. If we're biased, we won't see the other sides to a story. Protecting democracy and human rights, improving healthcare, harvesting energy in a sustainable way, supporting economic and technological progress, shaping society requires a broad view and an understanding that many things in life are interrelated. In its search for the best possible answers, Rutbaud University brings together the best in knowledge and facilities. Within seven faculties, teachers and researchers from over 50 countries explore all domains of science, working closely together with other institutes and civil society. With its state-of-the-art infrastructure, our green campus breathes openness, collaboration and shared ambition. It's a place where ideas come to fruition and talents can grow. Every day, we make an impact on society through our students, renowned scientists, leading thinkers and innovative businesses. If such a journey is to be yours, this is the place to be. If you want to shape the future together with us, we invite you to change perspective. Good morning, good afternoon or good evening. Um, wherever you are um, all over the world. Um, I hope you've enjoyed that uh, short video, which hopefully has given you a bit of an idea of what our university is about. And I'd like you all to welcome you all to um, this webinar about our English taught bachelor's program in international business communication. I'll probably call it IBC um, later on, hosted by the uh, Bardboard University. My name is Bernard Hendricks. Um, I'm the coordinator for this uh, program. Later on in the webinar, I'll be joined by uh, one of our um, graduates, Gwendolyn Banker, who will give you a little bit of the um, student perspective of the program. Right, so what are we going to talk about um, today? Um, this is the agenda for this session. Um, I'm briefly going to talk about the uh, faculty and department. Um, I'll spend a little bit more time on the Bachelor International Business Communication in terms of content and how do we organize our content. I'll briefly touch upon career prospects. Obviously, if you're still deciding on which degree program to choose, then you're not perhaps worried about career prospects, but I'll tell you a little bit about the kind of jobs that our students um, or graduates get once they graduate anyway. Um, at the end, there's a Q&A session. Um, we'd like to make this session a bit of an interactive webinar, so if you have any questions, make sure you post them on the, the chat section in the, in the, uh, on the page, and my colleague will um, pass the questions and try and answer them um, while, you're, while I'm talking. Right, first of all, so the video has given you a bit of an idea of what our university is about, but if you've not had time to check your Google Maps on where the Netherlands actually is, this is where we are, we're in Western Europe, and in the country, we're Nijmegen, so this is where the Radboud University is located, is on the border with um, Germany and is quite close to many of the um, international airports. Um, this is um, a bird's eye view of our campus on um, a nice sunny bright day. As you can see, it's quite green. Um, our buildings, uh, and this is where you would be spending most of your time studying, our building is marked in the white um, circle. And if you look really, really closely, you can see the sports centre in the background with um, the tennis courts, football pitches and rugby uh, pitches. 
Um, quite a high building, one of the highest building, um, of buildings of Nijmegen. Um, this is the view um, on the top floor. Um, the Faculty of Arts, and that is the faculty that organises this degree programme, is home to something like 2,400 students. We have 600 um, academic uh, and support staff taking care of the year programmes. Um, organized in 10 different departments. So you would find the Department of German Language and Culture, the History Department, the Department of Dutch Language and Culture in our faculty, but also, and that is the department that will be important for you, um, the Department of Communication and Information Studies. Um, we are a quite big department, in the, or one of the bigger departments of the faculty, 350 students combined in all our uh, programs, and we organize two bachelor degree programs. Um, a Dutch programme, the BA Communication and Organisation, which is taught in Dutch, um, and the BA International Business Communication, which is taught in English, and that is the programme that I'm going to talk about um, today. Um, it's a programme that lasts three years. It's a full-time degree programme. Um, and the language um, of communication, as I mentioned earlier, is um, English. This is um, a, a programme that we've been teaching for years, but last September, so this September actually, we uh, made the transition to having English as a medium of instruction. So in September 2016, we started with a whole new batch of students, 80 students this year. Um, the majority are still Dutch, but we do have 30 international students um, in this group. Um, we've listed the, um, uh, the flags on the, uh, on the slide. Some are from Germany, some are from Hungary, some are from Ecuador, um, Vietnam. So quite a range of um, international countries, which means that currently our classrooms are truly um, international. We think that's quite a big um, asset in terms of our programme, international business communication. Um, the main focus, if you were to ask me to sum up the program in a nutshell, I would say that the program is all about effective communication in a foreign language, taking into account any intercultural differences that there might be between different um, uh, people in multilingual um, organisations. And that means that in the three years of the degree program, we try and make sure that you gain the knowledge and the skills that you need to be able to function adequately as a communication professional in international um, organisations. And I'd like to stress that language in particular is really, really important. We are based in the Faculty of Arts, where language and communication are um, uh, things that, we, that um, concern us a great deal. We're not a business programme. We are a language and communication uh, programme. Um, how do we organise our curriculum? Um, in the pie chart, you can see quite clearly that um, the shaded bits, so the coloured bits, are the three main clusters of courses in our programme. Um, and you can basically divide the pie into three bigger clusters. There are courses on intercultural communication, there are courses on language communication and organisation, there are courses on academic and research skills, and uh, the white um, s uh, wedge of the pie is the minor programme, which means that there you choose the courses that you want to take. So you have a little bit more freedom um, in that particular um, segment. Um, right, first of all, so the first um, uh, wedge of the pie is taken up by any course, by courses that deal with aspects of intercultural communication. Um, you probably know that increasingly business is a multi multinational and international, meaning an organisation's workforce has um, employees from different nationalities. And the question is, how do you deal with intercultural diversity within one and the same uh, workforce? Organisations have stakeholders located in uh, the US or located in Vietnam. Um, how do you deal with the fact that all your stakeholders maybe speak in different languages? As an organisation, what do you do to make sure that you can communicate successfully with these organisations? So in courses such as intercultural communication, where we look at different cultures between different, um, um, different differences between different cultures, or cross-cultural online communication, non-nativeness in communication, we look at different aspects of non-nativeness in communication that might affect um, the success of businesses. Um, in this intercultural communication clusters, I'm still talking about the first um, cluster of courses, you will also take a number of courses in what we call your foreign language programme. Um, if you've um, seen the information on the website, you know that you have to choose at least one foreign language and you have a choice that could be English, French, German or Spanish. 
Um, and the foreign language programme is probably a bit different from what you may be used to at secondary school. There is no emphasis on literature or attention for literature. We don't look at Shakespearean um, uh, poems, for example. But all of the programme, uh, all of the courses in the programme, uh, make sure that you can communicate effectively in the foreign language in organisational context. So you'll spend a lot of time practising meetings, negotiations, reports, presentations, etc. So most of the courses are very practical. Um, in addition, in our foreign language programme, we also make sure that at the end of your degree programme, so after three years, you can also analyse language and advise other people on the use of foreign languages in organisational context. So it's not enough for you to speak um, a language proficiently yourself, but you also need to be able to analyse the language and advise businesses on what they should do with their language uh, policies. I told you earlier, we'll be joined by Gwendolyn Bain, who is one of our IBC graduates, and she'll give you her perspective on the things that she did in our foreign language programme. Thank you very much, Berna. Also, a very warm welcome uh, from me to this webinar. Before giving you some information about a specific course, I would like to point out that our general teaching method here at Rutgers University is quite special. We have a practice-based approach, which means that all the examples and ex assignment that you'll be working on in the courses are based on real life situations. That for me is very important because you get a clear view of what to expect after your study. So that was very valuable in my eyes. Um, to take for example the course of uh, strategic alliances. In this course you will be able to set up a joint venture with a company in a different culture. If you for example chose in English as your foreign language that culture may be, may be the UK. Now you have to set up business processes, you have to for example write a management summary and you have to deal with challenges that might arise in such an intercultural working context. And um, what I liked about this course is that you're being thrown in the deep from day one. So this might be a challenge at first, but with the guidance of your professors you will be able to overcome those challenges and that is a very valuable lesson for the future. And in addition, it enables you to have an incredible learning curve in a quite short time. And back to Werner. Thank you, Gwendolyn. OK, so that was the intercultural communication wedge of the pie, of the pie chart that I showed you uh, earlier. Uh, a second big wedge of the pie is all the courses that deal with language, communication and organisation and aspects of this. So as a communication professional, you have to be knowledgeable about theories and principles of communication, but also theories and principles of management and organisations. Because as a professional, you will be working in an organisational context. So this is something that you would have to be knowledgeable about. Um, again, this is not a business studies programme, but we do expect students to know a little bit about the principles of organisation management, for example. or this is not an information science program, but we do give um, students the basics of information and, and language technology uh, tools that they can use to analyse communication. So many of these courses will help you to function adequately in an organisation. Um, and to give you an example of one of these courses, a big um, course that, people have, that our students have just finished in the first uh, um, term of the first year, is a course on the principles and theories of corporate communication. And this is all about how organisations and the basics of the theories about communication, uh, the way corporations communicate with different stakeholders. And these days, stakeholders might be anywhere in the world. What do you do as an organisation? Do you communicate in different languages? Do you communicate with different strategies or different tactics, for example? So in this course, you'll learn about the principles and the different strategies that organisations have available. Um, an important aspect of this course is also crisis communication. And on the slide, um, I've listed a number of recent crises. If I say Volkswagen or Toyota, you'll probably remember the product recalls for cars. Um, quite recently, um, Galaxy had problems with exploding telephones. And y as you can imagine, any kind of organisation that has this kind of type of crisis, um, that's everybody's worst nightmare. So if you are a communication professional, you know that you'll be working weekends and holidays to make sure that you can protect the reputation of this organisation. And there are all kinds of theories and strategies that organisations um, can use. So this is quite an essential um, course in our programme. Um, thirdly, and this, has made, this brought me to the third wedge in the pie, 
and this applies to many uh, programs at universities, there is always a cluster with courses that um, help you to design research, to carry out research and to write up the research. So you expect, you can expect courses on academic writing, courses on business writing, but also courses on research methodology and statistics, just so that you can analyze the research um, yourself. Um, how do we organize all this content? Um, this is also information that is available on the website so that you can check it later. But basically, the idea is that every academic year, and this applies to the first year and the second year, every academic year is split up into two semesters. And each semester then has is subdivided into two terms, meaning that overall you have four terms per year and two terms per semester. And in terms of structure, all the terms are roughly um, the same. So in every term, you have seven weeks of courses, followed by two weeks of exams and studying or four weeks of exams and studying, for example, for the Christmas, um, the Christmas term um, or three weeks um, of exams and studying. So this is the same structure for all your courses in the first um, two years. Um, in the third year, um, the structure is a bit different. Our third year is different in the sense that um, in the first semester, you spend, you can spend all your time on what we call your minor program. So this is a program where you have a little bit more choice, you have a little bit more flexibility depending on what you want, and then you come back in the second semester for the remainder of your uh, degree program. What the majority of our students do, and especially because foreign, the foreign language program is so important, is they go abroad. So they spend a semester abroad. Um, this is an impression of um, where some of them go. As you can see, many of them go to uh, Europe, that is, of course, because German, French and Spanish uh, figure quite prominently in our um, uh, program. Many also go to the US or Canada or some go as far as New Zealand and Australia. So in the third year, um, you have the choice to go abroad for your semester abroad. Some students do even do internships abroad, although these are a little bit more difficult um, to organise. So the general idea is you, there is no teaching in the department in the first semester. Many students study at a university abroad, and the good thing about studying abroad at a university is that because the university has all kinds of exchange programs, the foreign credits that you pass in the, in the university in the foreign country count towards your degree here. So you don't lose any time if you want to spend some time in France learning French or in Spain learning um, Spanish. Um, Gwendolyn, our graduate, has also spent some time abroad, and she'll tell us about that right now. Thank you again, Verna. Um, I went to Japan for my semester abroad, and I can just really recommend you to um, make use of our numerous study abroad possibilities. Not only did my stay uh, broaden my horizon academically and culturally, but I also made friends for life. I think experiencing a culture that is very different from your own contributes so much to your personal growth, and it also looks very good on your CV. I was quite surprised at how easy the process of organizing this semester abroad was made for me. Um, from applying to my visa, to finding the right courses, to transferring the credits, Robert University has really supported me every step along the way. And um, also because it's integrated in the degree program, you don't have to worry about study delay or about uh, the courses not being recognized. So um, that was um, terrific. And I've heard from many friends internationally that this is also something that is not common at other universities. So I really highly recommend, if you do decide to come study here, do go abroad. And then hopefully, of course, you'll come back after your semester abroad, finish the degree program for your bachelor. And then the question is, of course, what do you do next? Um, there are some academic careers that you could uh, follow. Our own department offers one um, English taught uh, master program, International Business Communication, which is the advanced version, a little bit more in depth, taught at master level, a little bit more work too. Um, but you would also have access to the Language and Communication Research Master taught by the Faculty of Arts, which is a two year program, which has a selection procedure. Um, and in addition, there is also the Language and Communication Coaching Master, which is a one-year program and that is focused a little bit more on coaching and um, education and teaching. Um, and then, of course, once you've completed your master's degree program, you can start thinking about the job market. 
Um, it's always very difficult to talk about career prospects because careers, to some extent, depend on, I suppose, your semester abroad, what you did in your minor program, your own particular interest and, and ambitions. Uh, but in terms of success rate, um, our success rate is quite high. Half of all graduates uh, find jobs upon graduation and 92% uh, find jobs within six months, which is quite um, good in terms of success rate. Um, a third, roughly, is employed as a communication consultant in a business or an organization. 70% end up in the um, information and communication broad brand, and 3% um, end up being employed somewhere abroad, often in the country where they spend their semester abroad and then they then return to after their uh, master program. Um, in terms of career prospects, even looking further ahead to the job market, um, because our program is relatively wide and broad in scope, you find that there are many different options available. So again, it's difficult to predict in which particular segment um, you'll end up. Um, if you study dentistry, you will become a dentist, but a communication uh, professional is a bit of a fluid um, uh, function. So people end up in different, a, a wide range of careers, but also a wide range of industries. So media and communication and marketing are big um, um, sectors of the pie. Consultancy, um, some end up in project management, but also some in education and um, sales. Some end up in really, really large corporations, KLM, Philips, um, NXP, but obviously others end up working for fairly, fairly small companies. Um, so it's difficult to predict where exactly um, you will end up. Um, if you think that this is the kind of program that you can relate to and the, the you'd like to study, then it's good to think about whether you fit this sort of st ideal student profile, if there is such a thing as an ideal student. Um, but the kind of student that we'd like to attract is internationally oriented, obviously, male or female, of course, internationally oriented, interested in foreign language. In the first year, for example, roughly 20 um, or so, a third of the courses that you take in the first year are spent on the foreign language, so you have to be interested in foreign language. You have to have some sort of affinity with foreign languages. Um, you need to be communicative, you need to be outgoing, practical, but also curious. A lot of this, your time will be spent on look, reading research, doing research. This is a research-oriented university, so you have to have some sort of curious uh, mind. Um, so if you think that this is the right kind of program for you, if you think that you fit in with our student, our ideal student profile, then you must realize that there are also some admission requirements. And obviously, in this type of webinar, we can only give you the information in a very concise form, but there are many uh, uh, details about the admission requirements on the website. Um, to some extent, we select at the gate, so before you come here, come here, in terms of you have to have a particular level of English proficiency, but you also need to have a basic level of mathematics, just so that you can follow the um, statistics program. In addition, even though we do not really select at the gate, we select after the gate. At Dutch universities and Radboud University is no different there. We issue what is called a binding study advice. This is an advice that you um, receive at the end of your year if you've finished 75% of all exams. So there is some sort of selection um, at the end of the first year. We give you one year to prove that you can actually do the programme. Um, if you can pass 75% of all exams, you can stay on. If not, you unfortunately um, have to leave the, uh, the programme. You can find more information on our website but also um, sign up for an online consultation with our admission officer on um, Skype if you have further questions or if you have individual situations that are perhaps different from um, the rules and the set procedures that we have specified on the website. Um, if you've then been admitted, if you think this is the right kind of programme and you are the right kind of student and you have been admitted, then it is perhaps important to note that in before we actually start teaching in the first semester, um, we've organised the so-called Orientation Week, which takes place in mid-August. And this is where we show you around the town, we show you around the university, you get to know your students, we give you an introduction to the programme. It's a serious, f it's a combination of serious and fun um, activities. So this is actually a great way to start your um, um, academic year in mid-August. And then in addition, once you've completed the Orientation Week, we have a, a very special first week of term, 
and we're quite unique at the university in doing this, in the first week of your term, the teaching doesn't take place here on campus, but we take you away to an off-campus location for an intensive foreign language week. Like I said, the foreign language program is quite an essential uh, part of our program, and we would like to immerse you fully in the foreign language. So you have a week as an introduction to the foreign language program, but also an introduction to the IBC program at large, and you get to know the students and the lecturers a little bit better because we spend the entire week there. Um, right, this has brought us to almost the end of the, um, uh, the webinar. Um, I asked you earlier on to post any of your questions in the, uh, the chat session, and Gwendolyn will now yes. tell us whether there's mm -hmm. any questions that we can answer for a general, uh, the general public. There were many questions, so thanks for your interest good, in good. the program. Um, the first question that um, I have here on um, the iPad is, is it possible to do more than one foreign language? In theory, that's <laughs> a question that many people ask. In theory, it is possible to do more than one language, but in practice, I would say no. Um, in, to give you an example, in the first year, if you choose Spanish, then the Spanish program takes up 10 hours of classes a week. So if you then were to add French as a second language, you would have an additional eight hours, meaning that would bring the total to 18. But this is the foreign language program only. In addition, you would also have a course on r right now. In the first semester, students did, took a course on corporate communication, language and communication, and academic skills. So in terms of timetabling and the workload, I would say, no, it's not really possible. There is so much work involved. The program is based on a full-time uh, working week with one foreign language. So if you add another second foreign language, then your schedule would be really, really busy and you wouldn't have time to live or breathe, basically. Or so eat. No, no, we would say no, it's, it's not really. In terms of timetabling restrictions, it's also really, really difficult. Yeah. Yeah. There might also be overlap in the class. Yeah. Well, that's a good ambition. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the second question is, um, can I do a master's in management or marketing after graduating from IBC? Um, in theory, yes. Um, but having said that, I at the same time have to say that anything, we don't actually offer that master, so that master would, I guess, be offered by the Nijmegen School of Management. They have their own admission requirements. Often what happens, some of our students sometimes transfer to the Nijmegen School of Management to do a slightly different master, and then they do what is called a pre-master program. So many of these master programs might ask you to do six months or a full year of courses making up for any deficiencies before they allow you onto the master program. So that is something that you can actually, if you, that is the kind of thing that you're interested in, I would actually check a number of websites because all programs have their own specific admission requirements. So in theory, yes, but in practice, it does usually mean that you need to make sure that you make up for certain deficiencies in a pre-master program, which of course would require some an extra year or an extra um, six months, but it is in theory uh, quite possible. Yes, if yeah. you are planning on doing that, I would recommend to look at everything from the first uh, day at university, because as Werner mentioned, you also have the minor um, space that you can fill with courses, so maybe yeah. you can also fill some courses from your desired master in there to make it easier for you and maybe decrease the study delay. Yeah. Yeah. That's an option. Um, the third and last question that we're going to discuss is, can I do an internship? Yes, you can do an internship, and it's actually something that we encourage. Um, I suppose if you come in for, from an international country, you would have to find, so to some extent, there is some help in f helping you find internships, but it's not. Um, we, m we have more contracts with universities to make sure that you can study abroad than we have with companies abroad, for example. So if you want to organize, you can organize it yourself and you will give you, the, the university will help you to get the contracts and to make sure that you s to have the right sort of contract. But it is slightly more difficult to organize. But there is time to do an internship. So I think some unit, some students are actually right now doing, I think we have two students doing an internship in Canada or one in Canada and one in Spain right now, because currently we have no third year students. 90 of our students have spread out and flown to different countries and are all working or studying. So it is possible, but I must admit that it's a little bit more difficult because we do depend on the cooperation of organizations and that's often more difficult in terms of making the contracts. Yeah, but it's possible. 
Okay, well, those are all the questions that we have time for now. Okay. Um, I'm sure our colleague also answered some questions in the comment section. And if you have more questions, you can always uh, contact us. Yeah, obviously. and you can always send us emails, yes. obviously, um, afterwards. Okay, thank you for joining the webinar. Um, like I said, this is a half an hour session, so there's no way that I can tell you everything there is to know about the program. But for more information, check out the, uh, the Bachelor IBC um, uh, webpage. We have our own email address. Uh, the, website, the, 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 the university has Facebook pages where you find lots of information. And we have our own admission officer, so she is quite happy to talk to you or talk to you on Skype or s answer your emails. Thank you. Thank you.